I had a new subscriber ask me recently if I had done a video on my hammock chair. And I realized I've shown it a lot, I've been using it, I've talked about it, but I don't think I really explained how I made it or how it can work for you. If you're interested in learning more about how I made mine and where you can buy one, keep watching. Okay, so what I thought I would do is just take a moment or two to open this up and hold it up in front of you, talk a little bit about its construction and how I arrived at these, these, these size measurements and everything. Uh, then I'm going to set it up in the two modes that um, it's intended to be used for and I'll talk a little bit about each. So to begin with, uh, I'll say right up front, the, uh, I got the idea from another YouTuber, a friend of mine online that is, his name is Jeep and his YouTube channel is the Econo Challenge. And Jeep has been making and selling these for a number of years and of course I'll put information to where you can find out more about Jeep's products in the show notes below if you're interested. And this he sells as the Amazing Wilderness Camp Chair and he has some great videos on it on how it can be set up in different fashions. So that's where I got the initial idea for the design. Now since then I have seen it appear in a number of uh, videos by other people. I don't think it's a new design. I don't think Jeep came up with it originally. I think he may have improved it and made it something that was he could sell. But I've seen ideas of this that have been in books from a long time ago. So uh, it's not as if I stole Jeep's idea. I just kind of copied it or at least let's put it this way. I was inspired by Jeep to make my own. So basically, Jeeps, by the way, is much smaller than this. This is, is as big as it is because of the material I used. I got the material at a fabric store. It's a heavy-duty nylon. Uh, Jeep makes his out of ripstop parachute nylon, so it's going to be less than half the size, maybe even as big as that top portion right there, and very much close to the, big, to the same size. Now, I'll, I'll tell you also, although I don't have the exact measurements with me right now, I will annotate them on the screen so you have an idea of just how big this one is. Jeeps are a little smaller in dimensions. I don't know that it's uh, any benefit to having it the size that it is. Well, you'll see it when I get it set up. Maybe you'll help you decide for yourself if you decide to make one. So inside, so this pouch, by the way, this little stuff sack is attached to the chair, so I don't have to worry about it becoming separated. But inside, at the top of the bag, I carry two straps and right now they're held together with an elastic and I've even got a couple of pieces of wood corded to them so that I can hang these from trees very much like hammock suspension. Well it is, it's a suspension system for a hammock chair. It'll look like a small hammock when set up so it's not often I use it in hammock mode. Most of the time I use it with a tripod in a chair mode but today I'll do it in both. So I'm going to put those in my pocket, keep them out of the way and then I'll just pull everything out of the pouch. So I made this five, maybe six years ago. I'm not quite sure now. It doesn't go out with me on every trip. Uh, and there's no special reason. It's just that not every trip do, uh, do I have the uh, desire to use it to sit down on. But when I do take it out, it's usually to one of a couple of locations where I have made a tripod to use it in that fashion. So what I'll do is I'm holding it up now in front of you. And you can see it's just a big piece of nylon. I'm going to start at the foot end of it, or the base, where you're down at the bottom, um, because I think that'll uh, help explain why it's designed the way it is. So what I did, I'm going to estimate it's about 30 inches in width. And what I did is I created a channel along the bottom. Let's see if I can get in and show you this. So you should be able to see right along here a sewn portion. So the channel is just over four inches when it lays flat like this and it's been sewn and reinforced quite heavily and that channel is that big not just for the string or the straps to go through but so I can put a stick through and that stick's going to sit under my knees when I put it in tripod mode. So it has to be wide enough for a good size pole. I usually run about a two inch piece of birch, birch maple whatever I can find dead standing to create the that piece out of it's usually about five feet long so it'll span and the, the two uprights of the tripod. So something through there. Now one small trick is make sure there's no little uh, branches, stubs of branches sticking off the end of the stick because you don't want it one ripping this or being uh, poking into the back of your leg. So down each side of this there is a double folded seam uh, just to hide the raw edge folded in and sewn in 
and that does give strength down to the edges of it but it's more about just being a little bit neat so it doesn't start fraying and I'm working my way up to the top now the top you'll notice is gathered like a hammock is and I have a string through there picked up a stick just now I have a string through there and this is paracord you could use anything I guess you want it but I, I had paracord that was similar in color by the way I'm going back to the bottom again and you'll see there is a string running through that channel as well and both of these are adjustable with a knot and I'll explain that one in a minute now this is gathered at this end but it opens up just like a like the other end is the channel that this end of it is only small you can see it's only about a one inch finish because the only thing running through this channel is the paracord itself and the paracord I'm running it right now it's a run it looks like it's about 14 inches the loop that I have off the end of this and that's because of the hanging it up over the the uh, tripod that I have here and again the adjustment right here I'll explain the adjustment more uh, when I go to set it up on the hammock or on the tripod uh, and then we'll go and set it up as a hammock mode but what I've evolved from is I had been using a um, a barrel type of a knot uh, uh, can't remember the name right off the top of it and of course I'll put that on the screen when I think of it but I switched over to something that's very much like a trucker's knot so I, I just have a bowline and I'm running a string through it and then I tie that off with a slip knot just to adjust the length of it and I, I find that is less likely to pull out under the stress of my sitting in the chair okay let me reposition the camera I'll set this up on the tripod and show you how it works there Okay, I'm just picking up the camera. We're going to walk over to the hammock chair so I can point out a few small tips and tricks. And of course, immediately after I turned off the camera from the last little segment where I couldn't remember the knot that I was using, the taut line hitch, of course. So the taut line hitch is the knot I had used, but I, what I found is under a lot of strain, for whatever reason, it would jam up and even slip. So I evolved to what essentially is a, a trucker's hitch. So I have two upright poles against the tree they are approximately eight feet long and I have the cross one which is just over four feet optionally if I didn't have a tree to lean this against I could have had a third pole maybe 12 feet long that I would have leaned out behind me and then tied it in tripod fashion at the top as it is I just have a uh, square lashing at the top and it's holding it together. I like to have one stick ever so slightly shorter so they're not both touching the tree and that gives me the option or the ability to hang that loop over. This is where the adjustments come in. You have to kind of figure out for yourself where on the tripod that it's going to sit so that when you go to sit in the chair you're not too low to the ground or too high and your feet are dangling. Now as I've got the tripod set up right now at the very base it's not even four feet and what I found you probably saw it as I just sat in it it's a little narrow for this setting I had to move this around a little bit it's a little narrow for my shoulder so I can widen it out just a tiny bit and I have the ability to do that with that cross piece because it's uh, I've got at least eight inches on either end that I can work with and then slide back into the chair a little bit one little tip I'll give you as well is leaning the base of the tripod forward quite a bit what happens is if you have it too straight up and down then this cross piece wants to slide down as you sit in and then you'll end up sliding out of the chair so don't be afraid to lean the base forward you'll need good heavy weight strong uprights for that 
but once you've uh, leaned the base forward, you'll get an idea of where it works the best. Uh, really comfortable, as you saw. In fact, I've even snoozed in this chair. It just takes all the pressure off my back. It's very comfortable to sit and eat. Having the tripod made so that it's just two uprights, I can move this anywhere around the tree, depending on where the sun is or where the wind is coming from, so I can sit and either have my face in the sun or my back to the wind. That kind of works out nice. So what I'll do at this point is I'll put the, I'll grab the chair, we'll go over to where there's two trees not too far apart, and I'll set it up in hammock mode. Okay, we're going to walk over to this setup and talk uh, about it, and, and then uh, sh I'll show you a couple of options you can do. So I chose two trees of very different sizes. Ideally, find two trees that are a little bit closer in size, and the only reason I say that is because you can see I don't have much of my hammock strap, my suspension strap, left to put my Marlin spike hitch in, so I can't get all the length. Now I could have adjusted the string or the uh, suspension paracord here a little longer, but for demonstration purposes, I think this suffices. I'm going to go over to the other one, then I'll give you a little bit of an idea of what I created. So these straps themselves, with this very nice camouflage, of course, were made from uh, roof straps or cargo straps that I picked up at a local hardware store and took the ratchets off them and everything else. Sold a fixed loop here. And that's what I fed the line through, or the rest of the uh, webbing through. Came down here. At the other end is when I just tied on the little piece of wood that I used for the Marlin spike hitch. Now let me just one-handed drop that. I don't think I'll go through the idea of how to tie a Marlin spike hitch for this video because there is lots of examples of that on YouTube if you wanted to learn how to do it. So it's just a simple Marlin spike hitch and again, I just attached the uh, piece of wood to the end of the cord so I could have it with me instead of going looking for pieces of strong wood when I'm setting up the, the uh, hammock chair. So it's just that simple, and that's what I did at both ends. The trick afterwards is just adjusting to get it to the height you want. One little thing I've learned, of course, is, and I'm picking the, the chair back up, again, putting it back together with one hand. There we go. 
the one of the tricks is remembering that when you go to sit in the hammock chair and this is true of hammocks in general is that especially with the nylon uh, the cord and the material itself it does stretch and it's going to drop you down lower than it's sitting right now off of the ground so you know a little bit again some experience it's sitting right around just between my thigh height, I guess, between my knees and my butt right now. But when I sit down, I'm closer to the ground, but not so close that it's hard to get in and out of the chair. Now, one option, which I'll set the camera up and see if I can't show you and uh, may, well, see if that works on the camera. I'm just trying to figure out how I'm gonna do this. Find a place to attach the camera to a tree. Okay, uh, this is just a variation of the hammock mode, but it's, it kind of brings you closer to that tripod mode and the, the easy chair mode or whatever you want to call it. So all I did in this case was dropped this end, I, I'm going to call this the foot end, I dropped that part of the suspension strap down lower than I have it at the other end. The differential is probably about two feet but that varies between you know how big your trees are how far apart you are how long your suspension straps are so what i've basically done at the head end is raise the suspension strap up considerably so it means one end of the hammock is sitting considerably higher than the other end of the hammock and that just means that i can get in and sit back with my feet on either side of the cord and it kind of simulates what i've did with the tripod without the need to create the tripod it's almost as comfortable, actually it's very comfortable, and a lot easier to set up. The only trick is getting in and out without tripping over the cord. So those are the three basic setups, but uh, we'll just talk a little bit more about the hammock chair in a moment. Okay, before I just fold this thing back up and put it in the, its stuff sack, I thought I'd show you exactly that, the stuff sack. So the stuff sack for me was a bit of an afterthought. It wasn't until after I had made the hammock chair, I realized that I could just as easily attach the stuff sack to the chair and then not have to worry about losing it. I chose to put it on the side of the chair about two-thirds down one side of the chair. Uh, I think if I was to redo it, I would just put it right on one end of it, probably the bottom end, the one that usually where it hangs off uh, uh, when I'm using the crossbar on the tripod. But basically, it's just a stuff sack, and I literally sewed it to the seam down one side. And the stuff sack is inside out right now while the chair is open. But when I stuff it into the stuff sack, which is just a matter of folding it out inside out, or right side out, I guess, and pulling the chair in, kind of giving you a little hard to do up in the air. There we go. And it takes a bit of just stuffing to get it in this stuff sack. And the last thing to go in, well the second last thing are the cords on the end. Because the last thing to go inside are the tree straps or the suspension straps. And then I just draw the thing closed, make sure everything's stuffed down inside, and there it is, ready to put back in my backpack, ready for deployment the next time I want to use it. So, you know, one other thing that I discovered this is good for is uh, like a ground sheet. Now, it's not that long. It's not long enough to cover my whole body if I wanted to lay this down for sleeping on. But it will do at least from the top of my head down to my butt. And so it gives me that much coverage. So I can lay this down, something to sit on, something to lay down on, um, even as a ground sheet. I suppose you could make it a little longer and, uh, and then it could serve as that purpose. So here's another thought. Um, I'm currently in the looking mode for some new material to make a new one, smaller than this. I want to make one much smaller, much lighter. Now, it comes with smaller and lighter, might sacrifice a little bit of strength. But if I get the right material, like some good ripstop nylon, I think I and finish the edges off well enough, I think it'll probably be plenty strong for the applications I have it. Um, 
at the thrift stores every now and then I'll find pieces of material quite often I don't know if you remember a few years ago these were really popular you saw them a lot at the beach they were kind of a, an air inflatable couch two side pillows that you would inflate and close up like a dry bag would and then you <laughs> could sit on top of them um, they were popular and then they lost their air and people get rid of them. They, they don't last very long as far as I can see. And every so often they show up in the thrift stores. Now I passed up a couple I shouldn't have in hindsight. And the only reason I passed them up is because of the colors. They were, you know, bright orange and colors that just didn't appeal to me for use in the woods. Well, the next time I, I see one, I'm going to grab one because they're usually made of ripstop nylon. So you get an inexpensive source of lightweight, strong nylon that would do well for making something like this hammock chair. The other thing I want to mention is if you got into hammock, uh, well, I'll give you my story. Getting into hammock and trying hammocks out, I, I didn't want to plunge and spend a lot of money on a really good brand name, well-known hammock. Uh, so I decided to buy one from China and, you know, cheap parachute cloth didn't cost me very much. Uh, it was well constructed. Problem was it was short. It was like nine feet long and not very wide either. So I couldn't lay in it properly. It wouldn't give me a diagonal lay and it, you know, it might do for a child or a small person, but certainly not for an adult, anybody. I'm only 5'10", but it wouldn't work for me. So I have this hammock chair or this hammock at home with, which is not much good for sleeping in, but it's not a bad lounging thing, if you know what I mean. I can use it for setting up between two chairs and lounge with. It actually folds up a little bit smaller than this. If you have to have one of those hammocks, you can do exactly the same thing that I've done by folding over in the middle so that the corded ends, the two gathered ends, come together, lay that over the end of the pole in that tripod mode, and then run a stick through the fold. So it'll be double layered, but it'll work just as well. And uh, I see people do that every now and then. So if you don't want to go out and spend the material money on some material for one of these things, you could certainly use it that way and then use it in full hammock mode for sitting and lounging in. Works okay that way. Optionally is, like I mentioned when we first opened up, is to contact Jeep at the Econo Challenge and uh, see if he, what he's, his costs are in purchasing these. I don't know what he's charging for them, but uh, I know that uh, they're small and compact and the pocket is built right onto them. And he has some great videos on his channel on how to set them up and use them. Okay, I hope that's been of some interest to you on how you could make one or where you could purchase one of these camp chairs and as Jeep calls them, the amazing wilderness camp chair, how I use it in tripod mode and how I use it in hammock mode. Um, you know, it's just a great little thing. It's lighter than anything I could prob probably carry. Uh, and if I had it made it smaller, it would be lighter again. Okay, that's all I have for you. If you have any questions about this hammock chair or any options that are, you know, some suggestions and how I can set it up optionally, please put them in the comments section below. But until next time, get out and explore and take that path less traveled because it will make all the difference. Bye for now.